what would be the, the actual cost? Like, is, is this component manufacturable? Uh, is this component uh, um, in good price or not? Mm -hmm. This KPIs also can be used to, to drive a DOE or, uh, or an optimization process or parametric optimization process. Um, as a result, like for example, you want to, to drive the, the manufacturability higher or, or drive the cost lower. Uh, you can create a, a cost function based on based on those those in, inputs together with the with the uh, the FEA results, um, and then you can uh, uh, modify the geometry uh, using topology optimization using our other tools such as uh, uh, simulation driven design. How yeah. much of it is actually AI? So let's let's talk about yeah. AI. Like today, I have Rushik on the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. Super exciting. Today we'll talk about AI for 3D modeling and numerical simulation and with particular focus on additive manufacturing. But before we get started, can you give the audience maybe a little overview of what are you guys doing at CDS and who is Hoshik in the first place? Sure. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Rushik Matroja. I'm the, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Cognitive Design Systems. It's a, it's a, it's a company based in, in south of France. Um, before uh, starting this company, I was a mechanical design engineer. Uh, from background, I have done uh, seven years uh, in Japan doing exactly what I'm doing now, uh, uh, that I'm trying to automate now. Uh, I was uh, uh, designing components for additive manufacturing for major customers such as Nissan, Toyota, um, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry, Mitsubishi Electrics. And then uh, we were also, we were a service bureau, so we were also producing parts uh, that we were designing. And uh, that's where we, that's where me and my, my partner, Henri, who is the CTO of the company, we saw the, the opportunity that there is a, something missing in between the, uh, uh, the design process and the, and the, the manufacturing uh, uh, that is being done. Uh, there are lots of insights from the manufacturing that needs to be considered um, to, to create a, a, a real marketable product. Uh, and for that purpose, uh, we also saw that uh, um, not only manufacturing and the and the, the performance is important, but also the, the the impact on the on the environment is also more and more a key key subject there. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, the, one of the, the biggest driver of the industry is the cost. Um, if uh, the product is it's good, uh, the performance are good. Um, if its uh, manufacturability is good, also, but if it's too expensive. Um, doesn't make sense for uh, for industries such as automotive, where we where the cost uh, drives the, the 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 whole momentum uh, of the design. Um, and for that purpose, we we decided that okay, let's uh, let's try to automate this process by bringing those uh, manufacturing insights into into a CAD environment. Um, and that's how the whole journey of CDS started. Uh, and uh, we have our third uh, uh, co-founder, Vincent Ung, who is. Uh, who, who is an ex-banker who joined us to to start this company as a cognitive design systems. Mm -hmm. Super interesting background. Um, I've seen some videos on YouTube from you guys. What you do is really, really cool. For me as an engineer, it's always fascinating to see what, what can be done. Maybe before we jump into the nitty gritty of what cognitive additive is and cognitive molding, um, what is the status quo looking like today? Like how are engineers doing it at the, at the current stage and how are you helping them to actually overcome this kind of cost barrier, I would call it maybe? So yeah, I mean, um, Additive manufacturing, specifically, as you know, that it's a, it's an it's an industry which uh, which is which is relatively new compared to compared to molding and and, and machining and other uh, the conventional manufacturing processes. So uh, there is a, uh, the first uh, challenge was the adoption of the of the of the process. Like it's mm -hmm. it's not as easy to to educate engineers uh, to uh, to make product uh, uh, for additive manufacturing. And uh, this drives to, to designs which are not suitable for the, the specific industry, and, and that drives the, the cost higher. Um, also, we need to understand that it's a, it's a, it's a very niche um, kind of a product that it has to be integrated alongside with other manufacturing processes. So um, we have uh, um, the, the manufacturing uh, uh, process such as uh, um, Part of it fusion, so they're like subcategories of additive manufacturing, uh, which uh, requires a lot of attention on uh, where we put the support structures, where we put the um, uh, how can I say uh, how the the part is designed. If there is no thermal concentration, but there are so many different aspects that needs to be uh, handled because uh, after the production, you also need to post process that, and uh, during the post process also there is a lot of cost involved in that in, in that that manner. Um, so how to reduce all this uh, this cost, uh, but also to understand so we can design better is, is a key. 
uh, to for the adoption of uh, of the edge manufacturing technology, and that's the the one reason we we started off with uh, in first place with additive manufacturing because that's where we saw that the biggest challenge is uh, where we need um, to bring uh, uh, we need to connect the dots between the what's being done in the manufacturing and what's being done in the design. Um, and we started with additive and then we are moving to to molding, which is uh, which is also as important because as I said, it's a it's a part of the of the whole supply chain. You you can't just produce parts in additive. You need to post process it. Or sometimes it's also important that okay, in the molding we use additive as a to create the dyes and tools and, and, and jigs and also the molds itself sometimes. Um, so uh, this this uh, processes are interconnected and and we want to at the end and and uh, goal uh, to provide to the engineer that okay, uh, you have a specific component that you want to. To, to design or you these are the specifications that you want to achieve for this component um, depending on the, the quantity the material the, the, uh, the, what's the the supply chain requirements based on that we have to choose the right process or right combination of process and for that purpose we need to have insights from the from from those manufacturing uh, side and those insights needs to be um, brought to the designer so he can design better from the first uh, first uh, um, first first how can I say first draft that he, he creates the the cat so there is no iterations so there, there are multiple uh, challenges uh, here where we need to reduce the iterations between the design and um, uh, engineer to the manufacturing engineer to the CAE engineer to, to to the one who will be doing the, the assembly and the, the one who will be doing the, the the production itself. So all these insights, if it's uh, in the CAD environment, you can design better. And for that, you need to have insight on all different manufacturing processes. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. To be very explicit, Rushik, where in the product development process does your tool uh, fall into? Is it more in the beginning, in the middle stage, or more towards the end of the product development process? So we are at the, the very beginning of the of the product development uh, stage where we 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 use uh, this uh, this tool um, when you have a concept when you have a concept which is uh, which is just coming out of the of, out of the drawing um, then okay I want to I have this uh, headphones to create okay these are the components that we need to create for these headphones what are the tools uh, uh, if the foam is manufacturable through additive if if I want to manufacture through additive what would be the requirement for uh, for that so. Uh, at the very beginning of the, the product development that we come into into play uh, using cognitive additive uh, cognitive molding also um, but um, we have also use cases where uh, we have uh, um, some of the uh, service bureaus uh, in additive manufacturing who uses this for uh, for the evaluation of the part for for their um, uh, production side so to make the quick quotations to understand okay uh, to explain to the end, end user what are the, the design flaws uh, which is driving cost high? Uh, so cognitive additive allows to to extract those informations from the from the path um, in um, in few seconds and uh, create a report which uh, which will uh, which will specifically um, talk about uh, 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 what's the manufacturability of it, what's the cost of it, what's the carbon footprint of it. Um, mm -hmm. Why the manufacturability is low? What are the exactly the uh, the um, what are the issues with the with, with the part itself in, in its geometry? Is it the thermal concentration? Is it the thin wall? Is it the the overhang or the surface roughness? So all this uh, information is provided in a, in a three D uh, colored uh, model, so you can exactly pinpoint it that okay, this is the zone that I need to modify. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the zone uh, I need to to optimize. To, to, to drive the cost lower, to improve the, the, the manufacturability of the whole part. Mm -hmm. Is there also kind of an, uh, an embedded recommender system that would tell you actually, I don't know, reduce this part, for example, at a radius here, or how does this actually work? Does the engineer have to decide by himself what to fix? But you only tell them so, where to fix it, right? Yeah, so we, we tell them uh, where to, to fix, first of all. Uh, but of course, in the, in the in later stage, what we are doing with Sinera is to how to fix it. Um, that's that's the, the second part of the of the job. So for that purpose, we, we use uh, uh, not only uh, the insights from the manufacturing, but also from the simulation, combining those two, um, uh, uh, doing a, a manufacturing driven design. That's how we call it. Um, manufacturing driven design is the insights for from the from the uh, simulation standpoint point of view, the manufacturability point of view, cost point of view. Everything has to be. Uh, uh, to be taken uh, uh, in consideration 
to uh, evolve the design. And for that purpose, we have created uh, some tools uh, uh, which are uh, simulation-driven design, which are manufacturing-driven design inside the uh, Cinera platform. That makes a lot of sense. We talked about cognitive additive and cognitive molding. Roshi, can you yeah. maybe differentiate those two and when should an engineer sure. use each of them? Yeah. So uh, let me start with the cognitive additive. So cognitive additive is a tool for uh, for uh, engineers who would like to assess the, the part manufacturability, the cost and the carbon footprint of the of any given component. Mm -hmm. um, you put inside a, a 3D model, um, you can set up your own uh, database of uh, what kind of machines, what kind of manufacturing processes you want to 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 analyze on um, and uh, based on those uh, those insights will be uh, um, either automatically or semi-automatically uh, choose the right orientation for the part, uh, the right nesting for the part. Uh, we will also mimic the, the supports to understand what is the volume of the supports and where the supports are. Uh, and at the end, you will have a, a understanding of uh, uh, what is the, the feasibility of the part. Um, this feasibility of the part will be, be driven by the, the um, um, suitability for anti manufacturing uh, mm -hmm. for the component if the component uh, if it's too simple um, if it's easily manufacturable in in in, in uh, machining or molding then we will also say that okay this component may be not the right right choice for uh, for additive maybe you need certain kind of a geometrical complexity to to really leverage the the, the uh, um, added manufacturing combined with what's the quantity of it. So uh, based on those all those information, we will create a report which will uh, um, which will provide you information on on the, um, how how much suitable your your component is for added manufacturing process for the given specific process that you have selected uh, the specific machine that you have selected, but also uh, uh, what is the the cost of, of that. Um, how the cost will evolve based on the quantity that you want to produce. What's the um, um, the carbon footprint of it? So the carbon footprint will uh, uh, will uh, will be calculated based on the on on the database that we we, we provide and, and we, we enrich it uh, with the, with the data from the European Union, uh, uh, which allows to understand where the material is sourced from, uh, what is the impact, uh, what is the carbon uh, mix of the country where uh, it's being produced, uh, what is the, the, the energy consumption of each different machines that you're going to use in, in doing the manufacturing process, during the post-process, during other, other things. And based on that, what is the total carbon footprint of the, the, the manufactured part um, at the end? So based on that, you can uh, filter out the, um, the right way to, to, to manufacture your component. And this is done in, in, in cognitive additive. I see. So basically uh, the results, before we jump to cognitive molding, these results of cognitive additive, additive can then be used for DOE or other optimization loops, for example, maybe even in Sunera. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So um, cognitive additive inside Sunera um, brings you per part or for the combination of multiple parts um, a report. Uh, this report can be used for the DOE purpose. You can uh, together with the, the, the stress data that you are coming out of the other Cinera uh, modules, uh, you can actually drive the, for example, topology optimization uh, algorithm uh, by um, with with the DOE to optimize towards a towards a component which has the best uh, um, uh, balance between the cost, between the manufacturability, the, the the performance of the part, and the carbon footprint of the part. That makes sense. And now, last but not least, cognitive molding. What is that all about? Yeah. So, cognitive molding is a um, is a very different tool. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's as the name may speak, it's for the molding uh, purpose. Um, so, cognitive molding uh, currently does uh, uh, the conversion of any kind of geometry into a moldable geometry. So that's the the main goal. Um, so, first of all, we will take into uh, into the software uh, a three D model. It can come out of the topology optimization. It can come. It, it can be a different kind of uh, part. Like we, we have uh, examples of uh, sheet metal parts which are being uh, introduced to the cognitive molding. And then we will modify. We will morph the geometry based on the the, the parting line. Uh, how the the component should look like. Uh, how the component should be for the molding. Um, so we, we remove um, certain, if it's not in the functional region, based on the functional regions, we will remove some of the zones which are uh, not moldable. Um, we will uh, uh, create, we will morph the geometry into a more uh, moldable geometry. In order to do that, we will be on the background, uh, we'll be creating a, a simplified molds 
um, which we will be, uh, which will allow us to know that okay, if this mold is manufacturable or not. Uh, if the mold is manufacturable, then the part will be manufacturable. So uh, this uh, this iteration is is going on the on the backside, and and at the end, uh, the component which is generated is a uh, is a. Uh, I won't say it's a hundred percent ready to to be molded, but it's a it, you, it, it provides you with a, with a component where you can actually uh, do costing uh, if you wanted to to understand what are the costs for this kind of part, uh, or uh, continue the the further CA, C, uh, further CAD uh, work on top of that component uh, because it's easy to convert into into solid uh, geometry using uh, Cinera functionalities. And uh, you can continue the work uh, for the cat. So we accelerate the the, the mold, uh, molding engineers to 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 go from um, a concept or, or or a completely another process part into a um, I would say eighty to ninety percent ready component, which is uh, which is moldable, and then you can finish the uh, the work on top of it using the the cat functionalities of Cinema. That makes sense. Excellent. Uh, in the beginning of the podcast, I talked about AI for three D and kind of AM. How yeah. much of it is actually AI? So let's let's talk about yeah. AI. Like, what is actually AI in cognitive yeah. additive or cognitive molding? So um, for cognitive additive, we use a machine learning algorithm to to predict the, the printing time. So uh, as you know, the to understand what is the, the exact printing time of the of, uh, of any component for the specific machine for the specific process and for the specific uh, material, uh, given the uh, the manufacturing uh, uh, the print parameters. Um, there are a lot of considerations to be to be done. You need to do the slicing, uh, and the slicing based on the, the geometry complexity it can be hours of uh, of, uh, of slicing time itself. Um, what we wanted to do is to to understand. Okay, these are the, the geometric KPIs. Uh, we know how the part will be oriented, uh, and uh, we know what are the machine which is being used and what material is being used based on those uh, those uh, those uh, uh, inputs that we put into the AI. It will predict uh, what is the, the printing time, and that's how we trained our our, our um, AI model based on the, the real manufacturing data. Mm -hmm. um, that that was uh, as my my previous job uh, was to produce the parts. So we had those data to 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 fine tune the um, our our machine learning model to 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 make it as accurate as possible. Uh, on top of it, uh, additive manufacturing is a is an ever evolving. Uh, uh, Technology, uh, there are a lot of new things coming up, new machines, new, new uh, ways of uh, printing the parts. So we continue uh, the, the development on it. We are working with uh, with machine manufacturers such as Carasys to 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 also um, uh, develop the, the, the machine learning models based on um, the, the real manufacturing insights that we we, we collaborate on this. Um, and uh, in order to to extract the, the printing time as fast as possible, so in, in few seconds, and then we can work on the the, the costing. Uh, we can work on the, the manufacturability, etc. And uh, uh, this is how it's being used. Yeah, really cool. I think for everyone listening to this podcast, I think the best way to do this is actually reaching out to you, or maybe even have a look at your YouTube channel, or maybe some of the webinars that I'm going to link under the video that you have done with Scenario to kind of get an idea of how actually what you guys are doing at CDS. And um, to wrap up the podcast. What is to add in all about that you've developed with Scenera and what can people expect from it? Like, how can they use it actually in the real world? Sure. So our first add-in is the, is the, the cognitive additive add-in. Um, so uh, imagine a scenario where you are, uh, uh, you are doing a topology optimization using different um, uh, tools inside Scenera. Um, and uh, you have a component which is, uh, which is uh, uh, more or less uh, good uh, for the, for the, uh, uh, for the validation, but you know that okay, uh, what what would be the the actual cost? Like, is is this component manufacturable? Uh, is this component uh, um, in good price or not? Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the actual cost of it? So you can connect it with the cognitive additive, and in in uh, in uh, under a minute, uh, you will have a report. So it will uh, a report with uh, uh, that you can see it on um, on uh, maybe on the links that uh, that you'll be sharing yeah. uh, with the uh, information on on the manufacturability cost and and, and uh, other uh, KPIs uh, which will be extracted. This KPIs also can be used to to drive a DOE or uh, or an optimization process or parametric optimization process. Um, as a result, like for example, you want to to drive the the manufacturability higher or or drive the cost lower. 
uh, you can create a, a cost function based on based on those those in, inputs together with the with the uh, the FEA results, um, and then you can uh, uh, modify the geometry uh, using topology optimization using our other tools such as uh, uh, simulation driven design um, to uh, uh, converge towards a, a more um, how can I say uh, manufacturable uh, product, a more marketable product, as I, I would like to call it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I'll link also the add-in from Cinerva from the marketplace down in the description so people can actually check it out. Last question for you, Wushik. How do you see engineering yeah. evolving or the job specs of engineering evolving in the next five to 10 years? What's your prediction? Well, um, very inter interesting question. Um, as, as an engineer myself, I know that, okay, where I would like to, 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 to achieve. Um, currently, the, the design engineers and engineers in general are, uh, are constrained uh, based on the, the tools that they are using. Uh, they, they have to, to be master of, uh, of a certain specific CAD uh, tool to actually leverage the maximum out of it. But that's not the way uh, it, it should be. Uh, designers should be free to, or the design engineers should be free to express uh, what they want to, to achieve as a, as a concrete goal of, uh, of uh, achieving the, the higher performance of the part or lower uh, cost of the part. And based on that, the, the machine learning should help uh, drive the design in this, uh, this, uh, this direction. Um, and uh, CAD, CAD environments from being a um, sandbox environment where uh, the engineers creates its own uh, workflows and, and uh, create its own, um, uh, how can I say, the, uh, the value out of it because it, it creates the skill. Um, instead of that, uh, engineers can be decision maker. Uh, where it decides that okay, I want to 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 make my design um, more. Um, how can I say performant? Uh, 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 the cost is the, not not the the um, for example for some 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 industry cost is not the 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 biggest barrier. Uh, for other industry, cost is the biggest barrier. So based on that, you can decide that okay, how I want to evolve the design, and 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 um, the tool should be uh, able to to provide you with options. Um, that's the, the real way to do generative design with the options uh, mm -hmm. uh, to choose from and, uh, and find the, the, the right solution for you uh, based on those, uh, those options. Um, that's how I am seeing uh, design engineers job evolve and cognitive design systems is, uh, is, uh, is working towards this, uh, this future. And that's, that's what I want to bring it to the, uh, to the, to the industry. Uh, with my with, with my my colleagues here at Cognitive Design Systems to automate this uh, this design processes and design workflows as much as possible. Great, and with that we can wrap it up, Roshik. Thank you so much, and hopefully there will be maybe a second part in the future. Maybe we will get Theo on the show as well. But as I promised before the show, and we'll get you also on the Engineer Mind podcast on my own podcast, so we can talk in a little bit more detail about AI and the future of uh, additive manufacturing. So thank you so much, and uh, sure. talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening, everybody. Bye.